Had you listened and your parents listened to the fire station? Oh, well, did you have memories of their responses? Well, I have memories of them listening. I was very young. Um, I was born on February 27th, 1933. And Roosevelt became president on March 12th. So I was in the last 10 days or so of Hoover's presidency. <clears throat> and then I was there from the beginning of Roosevelt's presidency. But it wasn't until the late 30s that I was conscious enough. But I do remember my parents listening to the fireside chats. And they listened really. They loved him. A lot of immigrant Jews loved Franklin Roosevelt. My grandmother cried. She was in her wheelchair. And she cried and cried when he died. She was a woman whose English was imperfect. That's being kind. Um, she loved that man, and uh, my, we didn't have a huge number of pictures on the wall, but we had a little picture of Franklin Roosevelt uh, on our wall because uh, my parents loved him. They thought he was a good man, and nothing, uh, a man of the people, a man who cared about them. Uh, interesting. So, um, do you think that has something to do with your, this long, really, attention that you've had to the To the president? 30s. Well, partly it's something I lived through. Partly. However, I think it's because of a, dare I use the word, of a theory I have, uh, a little modest theory, that a good testing place for the values of a culture is a crisis, period of crisis. And this is a period of crisis I know a lot about. I lived in it. I taught in it. I, I have memories of the 30s. I have memories of, in the late 30s, of uh, my or very early in the morning when my father opened his little fruit store. My, his little fruit store was a real old-fashioned fruit store. He had to take off the doors and lift out boxes and make stands on the street and then fill It was terrible work. Uh, old people would gather and they'd stand there. I don't know if I talked about this. And they'd stand there with little baskets and my father would fill their baskets with ripe fruit. Uh, he would do this. My father was a nice man and he would do this without any rhetoric, uh, without any guilt. He would just hand, he kept baskets of ripe fruit that he'd have, probably have some trouble selling, but that was perfectly nutritious and delicious. Mm -hmm. And he would give it to them in the mornings and sometimes stuff that wasn't so ripe. And, uh, and I remember those congregations. Every morning, this little group of old people would come waiting quietly, and my father would say good morning to them, take off the doors of his store, and then reach under the stands and bring out baskets of fruit and give it to them. Uh, so I remember that. I remember people coming in. We, we lived in real tenements, and there were spaces between the tenements, alleyways. <clears throat> and people would come into those alleyways and do all kinds. They'd collect the garbage in those alleyways. They, the kids would run. I was one of them <laughs> through those alleyways, making all kinds of noises. And entertainers would come in those alleyways through the 30s playing violins and clarinets, and uh, in, in my neighborhood they, were, they would be playing old world Jewish stuff, and uh, you'd throw coins at them. Uh, uh, guys would come, I remember there was a cry, high cash clothes, well I always heard it as high cash clothes, and I didn't know what that could mean, but it was I cash clothes, mean, meaning I buy clothes and sell clothes. I cash clothes, and people would run down and sell them old pants and or buy. Got anything in a blouse that would fit me, that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I remember signs of economic troubles and people in economic troubles. I, I, uh, and then, of course, it was an old-fashioned neighborhood. I think I've spoken about this, filled with vendors selling food and this and that. Uh, but I do have those glimpses in my mind of the Great Depression. and, and uh, So yes, that. The, the fact that my teaching happened to throw me into this period, and and this is something I knew a lot about, so I focused on it for a while while I was learning other stuff, other periods. <clears throat> the fact that I lived in it, the fact that it is a long period of crisis, followed by another crisis, the war. Uh, it's a very good place to study American values, How, and this is the theory of the book. And I'll just say it here. And the theory of the book that's coming? Or the yeah, the theory, of the, the theory of the 30s book mm -hmm. that I've been playing with, writing pieces of, teaching, and that is um, the theory, the, the, the structure of the book, I should say, is people enter a crisis with culture. They don't enter it as tabula rasas. They enter it with culture. The crisis and the culture meet. 
the culture tests many of the, I mean, the crisis tests many of the cultures. One of the, one of the aspects of American culture is that you get what you deserve, that if you work hard, you will prosper. Well, in the 30s, people didn't get what they deserved. And not just the 30s, but the 30s, it was egregious. That's why periods of crisis are good uh, to test these things. And they didn't get what they deserved, and they could work as hard as they liked if they could get work, and they still weren't going to prosper. So how long does it take for the, for the situation to overcome the culture? And how long can the culture distort the situation? What's the, what's the meeting point? What's the, uh, that's what interested me enormously. And, uh